We're Gary and Celeste Havener. We own High Horse Farms, which is a small producer of mainly salad greens, edible flowers, and a few herbs. We are in an incredible spot because we have federal or um, state land around us on two sides. And we also live on the side of a ridge, so we get a lot of aeolian deposition. Everybody else's topsoil ends up in our yard and in our pasture, so we have incredible soil here. The soil out here compared to so many places in Albany County, Wyoming, in this little pocket is amazing because as she said, everything's blown over, settled in here. You know, we have some amazing topsoil. There's no rocks in it because the, the wind brought it in. And likewise, we get extra snow. The same thing, the snow settles in here. In the winter, that makes it a little problematic getting in and out, but um, in the summer, it makes it fabulous for growing. We live at 8,500 feet, so growing is somewhat of a challenge, but you know, it's not insurmountable. I think that's something that a lot of people have overlooked and forgotten. When we started with a, a little bit larger farming than just for ourselves, I wanted to build some high tunnels, but we have some pretty extreme weather. We have 100 mile an hour winds in the winter, at least one or two nights, and we have um, we can get up to three feet of snow load in one day. So we began to kind of adapt some ideas with using cattle panels and uh, building our own high tunnels that are a little more um, sturdy. They will actually, if we got a, a snow load that collapsed them, they will pop back up compared to a lot of commercial ones, that would be the end of the story. We have a cool season, the whole year, the whole growing season, which isn't that long, but we get them started usually in March. We start them in soil blocks and then move them out into high tunnels. So a fair amount of our crops are grown in high tunnels, and then as summer progresses, they go um, outside. Water is pretty um, valuable, I guess, here. We water everything out of a well. It's been tested. It's got it's drinkable water that I'm putting on plants every time. So when I sprinkle lettuce, it's just like out of the tap. And when we use it, we try to be as efficient as possible. We do a lot of trickle irrigation. And mulch. Um, and a lot of mulch to hold the water in. It's good land in that um, we actually have a fair amount of wildlife that come through. We have antelope and deer, um, a little bit of elk. Um, and so it's an area that's been utilized by a lot of different animals for quite some time. We had bees. We used to have bees. Then we had a bear. And um, we've toyed with having bees again. And um, the problem with the bees is that now we see a lot of natural pollinators, native pollinators. We have a lot of na say. native bees. I think we probably have 30 different types. And I feel like it would almost be criminal to cut in on their territory, you know? So we have plenty of pollinators here that are native, and I can buy honey at the farmer's market. As far as how the rest of the land or contributes to where we are, we don't utilize much of the other land. We kind of, we leave it. And you gotta let the land rest, like we're doing now. I mean, it had pretty heavy use for 10 years plus. I mean, the greenhouses we amend annually and, the, and all the fields that we use, but this year we just said, you know, we don't need to do that because we, we're not doing market this year, we're gonna take a break. And let, everything, down and let everything rest, because everything needs rest. We ask a lot for this area, and, you know, I guess we feel like the rest of the land is, is fine on its own. It takes care of itself. I think, I think we're really lucky in the land that we have here.